Thing case coming out. Okay, gonna break this shadow shield. Um, I hope this silver has it. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Road to Ranked VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we are going to continue on with a Will's team that we kicked off with in yesterday's episode on the channel. You can see the team on the screen in front of you now. There is a roll paste and a polka paste down below in the description if you'd like to try out the team, or just take a look at the details. If you do try it out, let me know, but all credit to Will, because he used this team over the past weekend to go undefeated and take the Flinch Squad. Invitational Championship. I was just looking to see if I had the trophy sitting here because we had it all set up from the weekend But uh, I've got them boxed up ready to post out and uh, actually I'm taking Wills down because he's gonna be at Orpington this weekend So I can hand it to him in person, which is gonna be really nice So I'll try and get some picks while we're down there But um, we had a really good episode to kick off yesterday a really good first game If you missed that I'd like to go back and check out the games from yesterday You can click up here and uh, have a look at that then we had a little bit of a hiccup against um Doc MZ, Iveltal, uh, getting caught out by uh, the best of one syndrome there and a little bit of Sheninja antics as well to, to boot. So um, we'll continue on with the team today. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm really enjoying the team. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far and uh, raring to go to get into this one today. So hop over to our, our main screen and um, we'll pick some music. I'd like to get to 1700 with the team. Like I said in yesterday's episode, what we'll probably do is we'll play this team uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Monday. Um, because I'm away over the weekend, I'm not going to have a chance to get any battles recorded. So we'll play this Monday, and then we'll come back on Tuesday with a brand new team. Uh, probably something that I'll take to the MSS over the weekend when I'm there. So we've got a first opponent, highly rated Japanese player. We'll get into team preview. And they are playing a team of Iveltal, Todomario, Tepu Fini, Cartana, Gengar, and Kyogre. So you've got Kyogre and Iveltal. Uh, restricted combination there. We've got Mega Gengar going to be the Mega of the team. We've got support cast from Togodomaru with that lightning rod ability. Uh, fast fake out as well as Nuzzle. Lots of disruption there. Um, the Tapu Fini for terrain control and then the Cartana that could potentially provide uh, Tailwind support um, and uh, just another steel check that's protected by the rain um, to kind of go along with this team. Uh, gives a bit more protection against Xerneas in particular, especially with Mega Gengar alongside it and uh, the gives the Avelts a little bit more room to operate. Right, face value. There's no Trick Room on my opponent's team, so straight away we could say mm, Trick Room is an option for us for sure. Um, but getting the Trick Room up might be a bit tricky. You know, in our last episode, we saw the Avelts with the Dark MZ. It did make it a bit awkward for us to get around that, and it's, I think it makes it even more difficult because of the Togodomaru's inclusion there. Um, I think what we'll do is go Lunala, and we're going to have to, I think, bring in Cineral. Maybe a Moongus as well. And Stax. But we're not bringing Stax. We've not locked in. We've not locked in. Why? Why? I think we've brought Tapu Koko as our last one. Which could function really well, to be honest. It's all about getting rid of the Togo de Maru, But at the same time, it wasn't really the game plan there. <sighs> That's why you've got to pay so much attention to the time, my friends, and not rabbit on so much when the team preview comes up. Okay, we're going to see Iveltal and Tapu Fini come out for my opponent, which is fine, actually. It means we are going to be able to get our Trick Room up pretty seamlessly. Or the alternative, what we've got, we can U-turn out onto the Iveltal, protect our Lunala, um, and just make sure that we're not taking any... M massive damage this first turn um, and then getting Tapakok onto the field at least that covers the Avaltal to give Lunala a bit more room the next turn so we'll protect Lunala here because of the threat of that Avaltal it does cause us a few issues we have you turned out on the Avaltal the smarter thing I think would have been you turning out on the Finny it's less likely to carry protect and the Avaltal could predict our protect and protect on our protect if you get what I mean so we're going to see just a snarl come out from the Avaltal here uh, it is going to hit into our Incineroar. Uh, we'll see what this Tapu Fini goes for. <sighs> Light screen. Oh, it's one thing that we didn't want to see. It really is. It really is. Um, the U-turn coming out. We might have to preserve Lunala to later on in this game. Get a, a little bit of chip damage onto the Veltal. Um, and we'll get Coco onto the field. Oh. 
And one of the things we could potentially do is just wide guard. Wide guard and discharge. And I think I'm going to do that just to get damage off. Because I think, if anything, we probably see the, the Veltal go for a Snarl maybe here. Um, there's no chance of Lunala getting picked up unless we see the, the Z move again. <sighs> we said this yesterday. I feel like it's going to be deja vu over again. Okay, so another Discharge will get that Veltal. We're going to see a Tailwind here, which is fine. Um, I don't mind this too much. And um, we'll probably see maybe an Icy Wind. Moonblast. Okay, so that's going to be into Lunala for sure. Break that shadow shield. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's not the worst. It's definitely not the worst. It could be a lot worse. Um, I think we'll preserve Lunala. Shadow shield gone is a bit annoying. Uh, Amoongus can come in, take a discharge. We'll uh, we'll go for another discharge here. Should get rid of the Veltal um, and do some nice damage to the Tapu Fini. Like Coco's not really threatened by the Veltal here. Uh, foul player coming out. Yep. Yeah, into Lunala. Uh, Moongus takes that pretty comfortably. Heal pulse. Okay. I mean, th the best thing we could do is get a couple of, like, paralyze both targets here. And it kind of nullifies their tailwind, which would allow us to pick up the knockout the next turn um, on both. Come on. Paralyze. 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 Yes. One. Come on. Get both. Get both. Ah. I don't think we're going to now. Okay. So, we get the paralysis onto the Finny, which is nice. It stops the heal pulsing the Vel till this next turn. So, um... We can definitely go for a regenerator or uh, just a clear smog maybe into the finny just to make sure that we do take it down here and go for another discharge. So what does the Eveltal do here? Goes for a snarl, okay. We could have clear smog there on Coco. It's not probably the best idea to do to be honest. Critical hit on Amoongus. Um, hopefully this will be enough after minus one but the, the light screen is up so oh it does we get both is that a crit on the finny it is and oh, we get pretty lucky there redirect the clear smog to get rid of our um a drop come on amoongus hit us no it fails okay um kyoga and gengar potentially yeah, Gengar. Hmm. And Kyogre. Now we need to get around this Tailwind. Hmm. Tricky, tricky, tricky. We're going to have to sack something. Now what's going to be better to come in? Shadow Shield Bust. We need Coco for the, the Kyogre for sure. The Gengar threatens our Coco as well, which is a bit of a pain. Like the late game would be great if we had this this exact board position. Um, how many turns of Tailwind have we got left? One with the light screen as well. So we could potentially just pull a double switch. Um, I just don't think a. Hmm. Yeah, we could pull a double switch. I think we'll do that. I think we will do that. And hope that both our targets get taken down. Um, because then we get the Coco back on the field with the Amoongus. And we can Rage Powder. Uh, potential Slick Bomb from the Gengar. Which is the only threat to Coco. And our terrain is going to end this turn as well. So it means we get the terrain back up when we do come back in. Let's see what my opponent goes for. Yep. <clears throat> So there's a sludge bomb and a water spout. Gonna be enough. Oh, Lunala hangs on. We kind of wanted. Uh, kind of okay. I would have liked Luna. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Lunala hanging on is not the worst thing in the world because we get Coco back onto the field now. Speed ties, though, that's the problem, I think. Um, especially with the Gengar. Uh, uh, we could go Discharge. Wide Guard. They like, no, we got Discharge. So whether it's worth them um, 
protecting on I don't know hmm I do I just go Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt gets Gengar 100% we could wide guard Thunderbolt wide guard and if we see a protect from the Gengar and a water spout at least we kind of got that protection from the wide guard this turn Kyogre protects it's going to be down to a speed tie which you never really want a game to come down to to be honest we could have maybe trick room there as well which would have given us a bit more of, I think that probably would have been better we do win the speed tie we should take the Gengar down now um, so we got a bit oh we don't oh it actually goes for I don't know if I agree with that. Maybe they expected the trick room. Yeah, I don't know. But now we can just rage powder. Um, rage powder with the Moongus, Thunderbolt the Kyogre. That will take it down. Um, and then and then Gengar is going to go down to 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 Coco. I don't know if we go down to a Sludge Bomb. We've got a target there. Yeah, I'm rage powder. So. Speed tie not really mattering there too much. But Rage Powder going to come in handy. We'll get rid of this Kyogre. Sludge Bomb. Hopefully Among Us can take this. Yeah, we take it. So that's the most important thing there. I think being able to take that. Oh! Oh! We... Coco going to go down. I'm pretty sure. The specs are so weak. The specs. <laughs> you can't even dig down a Kyogre from full. Oh, that is disappointing. Um, but we can't really do anything now. So it's game game over. We'll go for a Grass Knot. And um, we'll move on to our next one. That's a bit of a shame. I think we could have won that. Iveltal's a little bit tricky for this team. Maybe Rayquaza would have been better for us to bring. And... Um, I've actually got a heating engineer coming around to fix a boiler, so I've just had a missed call, and if I don't answer the phone, they don't come. So I'm just going to quickly cut the video now, my friends, and then we'll be back with our next opponent very soon. We've got our next opponent, Marcus R. from the United States, 16.05 rated player, playing a team of, and we'll hop straight into team preview and have a look. They've got a team of Sogaleo, Comfy, Incineroar, Tapu Koko, Mimikyu, and Rayquaza. So we've got the Rayquaza Sogaleo combination there. Gives us, an, I think, an instant uh, advantage here with our Lunala. Things we need to watch out for, obviously, with Lunala is that Mimikyu and the Incineroar both posing a little bit of a threat for us here. Uh, there is definitely a Trick Room mode on this team. You've got to say um, Sogaleo and the Mimikyu can set up a Trick Room. And the Comfy, with its ability to heal things with um, Floral Heal, Healing can be a bit of a problem for us as well so we need to make sure that we are dealing with that um, in the right way uh, okay <clears throat> how are we gonna set up against this team do we go trick room do we go hmm so is a little bit of an issue because um, I mean we do have the Cassie Berry on Lunala I think I want to lead with it because it gets around any sort of uh, fake out support um, do we want Coco in this match? It does outspeed everything on my opponent's team. Can break the potential disguise on that Mimikyu pretty easily. Do some decent damage to most things without um, having to worry about getting outsped. So that makes sense. I think the Ray as well. And then maybe Stack Attacker in the back because of the two fairies. And um, Incineroar we can't. We can't intimidate Sogolea anyway, so we've got to deal with that. Um, I think more really along the lines utilizing Coco and then Lunala to, to help deal with that Pokemon of everything else. So let's get into this one against Marcos. Good luck, and uh, we need to pull a win out here. Uh, Comfy and Sogolea are coming out for my opponent, which is pretty decent for us to be honest. Right, so we get the Tapu Koko in, the electric terrain set up. And, um, right, I mean, what we're going to see from my opponent, I don't think that Lunala's really too too threatened right now, to be honest. It's whether or not we want to get a Trick Room up, which could prove quite useful for us. Because, like, face value of my opponent's team, 
Everything's quite slow, but I, I do think there's a trick room element there that they probably want to go for, and maybe going for a Moonguys Beam into the Sogaleo is just a good play in general, and then a Volt Switch out onto the Comfy, which I think is probably the one thing that doesn't protect this turn. So Draining Kiss coming out. Okay, going to break the Shadow Shield. Um, I hope this Sogaleo has got... Uh, it's got Crunch. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Ah, okay, well, that is that. Things get way more tough right now. Um, I think we're going to have to bring in... Uh, well, we can't bring in Stack Attacker because of the potential superpower coming out. Um, so we'll bring in Ray. We could try and get a Sword Stance up. Um, and we can try and get some damage onto the Sogaleo. Right. Um, I think we've got to start targeting the Silver Leo down. So I'm going to go for Thunderbolt there. And I'm going to go for Sword Stance with Ray. Mega Evolve as well. <sighs> okay, Silver Leo going to switch out. What we're going to see come in Incineroar. I don't mind this. We're going for the Sword Stance this turn anyway. Um, so it's not too bad. We've got to preserve Coco though now for that Sogaleo because otherwise we've not really got anything to hit for very big damage. Like Stack Attack is not going to be able to do a job against it, um, and Ray isn't either. So like Tapu Coco is kind of our last hope for that one there. Comfy Protecting, so that's pretty good for us. It gives us that free Sword Stance, which is nice. So we'll be plus one after the Intimidate drop. We get a nice big Thunderbolt into this Incineroar here. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, and I think we have to try. We'll probably go. Yeah, I think go for another Thunderbolt again into the Incineroar. And I have to protect the Ray. I think the Ray is a big element of the team that we need to make sure that we're taking care of. I don't want to take Draining Kiss into it this next turn. So, Fake Out Draining Kiss could be the option there. Uh, but Fake Out into the, the Coco uh, makes a lot of sense. And Tailwind coming out. Not really going to help my opponent too much because I don't think the Incineroar is going to be able to outspeed the Tapu Koko and an Extreme Speed will get the Comfy this next turn. So uh, we don't really need to worry in that regard. It's just about what comes in um, this next turn uh, after we take down or clear the field potentially here. So we'll go for the same. We'll go for the Extreme Speed into the Comfy. That'll take it down. Um, it's not going to allow it to get an attack off either. Floral healing. Okay. What priority bracket is it? it? Must be plus three then. That's mad. Uh, we get the extreme speed off. Uh, or is it plus two and then the tailwinds? The tailwinds giving it the jump. And we get another thunderbolt in. Flare blitz coming out into Coco. Identifying as well that the Coco is probably the one thing that my opponent needs to worry about more than anything oh, that is so frustrating okay uh, now we'll get stacks in now we'll go down to super power I feel like we've got to oh Ray's coming in I mean that's almost better for us because we can continental crush the Ray We could substitute. Z move the ray, I think. And then we go for an extreme speed into the incineral. Which should pick up the incineral. Okay, so it's going to be Sogaleo coming back onto the field. If the ray doesn't mega evolve in my opponent's end, it's going to go down. That's uh, that's mega evolving. Okay. Uh, crunch Sogaleo. Okay, so this isn't gonna be doing that much. Okay, and then we're gonna see Dragon Ascent. Maybe, you never know. It's gonna take a minus one. It should proc a berry. Oh, it's not even gonna be in berry range. So it's minus one defense. 
It's gonna have the Delta Stream protecting it. It's gonna be close. But I don't think Stax has got a way to, like, not got a way to beat the Sogaleo. That's the problem. You could maybe be cheeky and try and get a substitute up. But I just don't think it's going to happen. We take down the Rayquaza, which is good. Opens the door for the Incineroar to come back in. Do we have an attack boost? Which is not really what we want. Um... I mean, the one thing we kind of could have going for us is if the Incineroar decides to fake out the Rayquaza, that would proc a berry. Um, and you kind of hope that it would fake out that slot. I'll go for a Stone Edge into the Incineroar and I'll go for a Sword Stance. I'll hope that you fake out into the Ray, and if you do, then a prox a berry. Dang it! Dang! Yeah, and then that's going to be into Ray. I mean, we had to kind of try for the fake out there. Could have protected, but I think we need the berry to really do some work to Sogaleo. Oh, okay. We get a free sword stance. Huh. It's interesting. We still don't have really a way to um, hit the Sogaleo, though. Well, maybe they don't have superpower. Go for Stone Edge into the Incineroar and protect Ray this turn. I think you have to chase down the Ray with Sogaleo now. Yeah. No low kick either, which is fine. Okay, so no superpower, which makes things a little bit easier for us, although it does a heck of a lot of damage. How much is a Dragon Ascent and a plus two Stone Edge going to do to a Sogaleo? Is it plus two? Plus one. Mm. Would we be better going for Jarrowball? Potentially. Because it's a speedy, I think it's a speedy Sogaleo. Um, base power, Jarrowball's probably doing more. We could Trick Room as well. We're probably better off Trick Rooming, to be honest. And then going for a Dragon Ascent. Oh, it's so fast. It's so fast. It's scarfed. I'm just realising that now. I should have realised at the start when it adds better Coco then. I don't think a plus one Jarrowball is going to get from this range though. And we can't get a sub up. Ah. Alright, alright, alright. Well, we can try. That's all we can do. Scarf Sogaleo catching us out. We just went for that twice, I think. We would probably got it. Mm. Yeah, we needed to trick room a turn earlier. Rather than getting rid of the Incineroar. Yeah. Oh! On Sonnet. Oh, not a good episode for us today at all, uh, my friends. So, um, we will cut it there. And we'll come back tomorrow to try and get some better results. Uh, things haven't went well for us today. Getting caught out by a couple of things in today's episode. But some good points to learn from, I think. And uh, some things to build upon. I'm not going to get too downheartened. I will just apologise to Will because the performance hasn't been great. But uh, we will come back stronger tomorrow. Finish the week off strong. And uh, have a really good end to the week before we finish up with the team on Monday next week. So have a great day, my friends. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. And I will see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.